Imagine you're a middle school student working at 10 o'clock at night trying to rack your brain for ideas for your first big informational writing piece. Your teacher wants for you to research something that has affected you or is important to you in some way. But you just can't think of anything. It's like someone deleted all the tabs in your brain and all you're left with is this intimidating search bar waiting for you to request, take your request. Have you ever experienced writer's block or art block? Or even, like the example, student block? Art block and writer's block are all times when a person is deprived of or just cannot find creativity or inspiration. I'm going to use the word creative block. Anyone can fall victim to creative block. 70% of people, especially students, have experienced writer's block. And I can pretty much guarantee you that every single artist that has ever lived has experienced art block at some point. So what can we do to find that inner creativity? Today, I'm going to share my experience as an artist and what you can do when you're stuck. One strategy is to observe your surroundings and draw it or describe it in detail. For example, as I wrote this part, I was sitting in the swivel chair, my Spanish things beside me, and listening to small conversations about unorganized people. That can easily be the only thing you need to get started. When I want to draw, but don't know what to draw, I look at my surroundings in a different way. I also tend to go different places, so I'm not just drawing my living room or my bedroom. This is a picture of when this is a picture of when I went to a cat cafe and sketched. I tried to get the emotion and the fur of the cats just right, but I wasn't focused on making it too realistic. This experience also made me realize how much I enjoy drawing animals. This leads me into my next strategy, breaking out of your comfort zone and trying something completely new. For example, if you're a writer who focuses on writing fantasy worlds with a daydreamy feel, you might want to try researching a historical event and writing a historical fiction piece. Or, if you're a cartoon artist, try drawing a realistic self-portrait. I personally tried this in my drawings, because I was looking for something else to draw because I was bored. You see, I mainly draw animals, flowers, landscapes, basically anything but people. I try drawing people, and if you know me, I'm terrified of drawing people, because I just cannot get the proportions of a human face correct. I wish I could, but I can't. Yes, I did draw people. I watched YouTube tutorials and worked harder on the drawings than I would have liked. And after all that work, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. But I gained experience. But the best case scenario is you take that new knowledge of that new topic and mix it in with your style. And, or you could totally disregard it and never do it again. This can also be beneficial when you're stuck on a work or school project. If you are used to researching one topic, like cats, try a different one that you're also interested in. In addition, you could look at what other people are doing. Okay, imagine you were just handed the final large assignment in science class and you get to pick your topic, but it has to relate to plants. Now, not all projects will have a restriction like this example, with the, with the topic having to relate to plants. Try to talk to people of what their ideas might be for the project. One person might be researching photosynthesis, and another might be researching how, people, how pollen affects people who are allergic. Pollen is interesting. Let's build off of that. Bees collect pollen. How about a topic on bees and flowers? You just use the people around you to find an idea. This also helps to be original. Knowing what other people are doing and building off of that can complete, can make an idea just as your own. I often do this when I'm drawing with my friends. Like I looked at the colors and the styles of my friends and made my own piece of art out of it. Like taking the subject of animals from one person and the bright neon colors of another person and creating a bright picture of animals. Another idea, randomization. This may not be the greatest of ideas because the computer is generating the idea and not you. I myself used a random art prompt generator to pick an idea to draw. This is a picture of a fox in a trench coat. I know it's weird and I would have never thought of this idea if it weren't for the generator. Also, when I was using the generator, I didn't just generate one idea. I went through multiple ideas until I came to this one. 
But by doing this, I also found the ideas I didn't want to do. This is why it's not always the most conventional way of coming up with ideas. Another way to use randomization is to write ideas on pieces of paper and pick one or more out of a hat. This gives you a little more control over what you're picking from. Like, you could put your favorite ideas for a project in a hat and pick one. This also helps if you're someone like me and who is indecisive and has multiple ideas at once but just cannot pick one. All of these strategies can be helpful when it comes to creative block. And the best thing is, anyone can use them. They can be beneficial no matter if you're an artist or just a person who cannot think of an idea. Sure, I just, I just shared my experiences as an artist, but I encourage you to go out and try these in whatever you are working on currently. Even when you're not stuck. But in the end, when you are stuck, stare right at that blank canvas or paper and remember these strategies because you might just create the next masterpiece.